Well, this whole great reset, using the pandemic as an opportunistic crisis, that sounds shocking. That sounds like something of a internet conspiracy theory. Oh, that can't be true. But when you actually see Justin Trudeau say it himself, in his role as prime minister, on behalf of our country, that clip was actually from a United Nations press conference, you realize maybe the inmates are running the asylum. And that's the madness here. A conspiracy theory is often hidden. You don't know the facts, you're speculating. Did Jeffrey Epstein kill himself or was he killed? We don't actually know for 100% sure what the truth is. So speculation fills the void, but here, there's no guessing. Trudeau himself said it. Joining us now via Skype from Winnipeg is our friend Spencer Fernando from spencerfernando.com, a great critic who saw this videotape and did an excellent commentary on it. Spencer, great to see you again. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, good to talk to you. Hey, Spencer, I, I've always said to people who indulge in actual conspiracy theories, I've said, listen, I understand your skepticism, your hyper-skepticism, even a little bit of paranoia these days is probably wise. But the real scandals are just lying right out there in public. This was not a secret recording. This was not a hidden camera on Trudeau. He was saying this at a public press conference involving the UN. That's what's so crazy about it, don't you think? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I think, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people not too happy with the fact that he got so much attention for talking about that. That's probably not what they're wanting. But again, you know, to the, the brazenness with which he's basically admitting, you know, I mean, this has been terrible for basically everybody in the country, you know, tens of thousands of deaths in Canada, of course, many more deaths around the world. Uh, the economy being absolutely devastated. People can't see their families. But you know what? It's a great opportunity for us to do some things we really wanted to do but couldn't get away with before. And it, it's just it's tone deaf and it's arrogant. And it really shows somebody who really, you know, seems to think that he's totally above accountability. Spencer, what... What I find interesting about Trudeau is that going back even to right after he became prime minister in 2015, one of his first interviews uh, was with the New York Times. And that's where he laid out his globalist philosophy. He said there's no core identity for Canadians. We, we don't really have a distinct identity, which is quite odd. I mean, that's the opposite of what his father would say. I mm -hmm. have a theory, Spencer, that when... Justin Trudeau is speaking to a global audience. He sort of forgets that he's supposed to be a, the Canadian prime minister, and he's like trying out for a globalist mascot or something. It, it's often when he's talking to the foreign press that he gets the, the weirdest. Um, I, I think he might have even forgotten that Canadians were watching him as he talked about this global reset. I don't know. He seems to do it the most when he's talking to foreign outlets. Yeah, I think it, it's two things. It's one, it's foreign outlets, uh, but it's also when he seems comfortable, which is when he seems to reveal what he actually believes. Uh, so, I mean, with the comments, you know, we saw recently, uh, you know, I, I've, I've said before, and not even as a criticism, but just, I think Trudeau should go work for the United Nations. I think he'd be much happier there. I think Canada would be better off. It would be a win-win for everybody. He can stop being prime minister and go do the job. It seems he really wants but also, you know, if you look at, you know, the comments he's made when he's comfortable, uh, two come to mind. First, the one where he talked about uh, admiring China's basic dictatorship. That was at a liberal fundraiser. Right. And right when he said it, you could tell that he knew he made a mistake because he said, you know, it's the, it's the country he most admires. Uh, uh, but then uh, Stephen Harper would love to have that kind of power, right? Yeah. He tried to throw it back on Harper. And then you had, I think, was it maybe a year or so ago, uh, where there were some indigenous activists there uh, talking about mercury poisoning, and that was also a liberal fundraiser. And he just arrogantly dismissed them and said, thank you for your donation. So right. when he's when he's really comfortable, I think that's when we see the real Trudeau, not not the, the kind of mask he puts on with his, his drama skills. That's a great point. Um, I think he, he does it when he's comfortable. He does it when he's trying to impress people, uh, mm -hmm. impress, like you say, the UN. Maybe he sees himself as a future... Secretary General, I think he'd love it, by the way. Oh, uh, no would. accountability, lots of travel, lots of snoozing, <laughs> not, no accountability. Uh, I think he'd love it. I think he was actually quite hurt when he didn't get the UN Security Council uh, seat he spent countless Canadian tax dollars lobbying for. But the one thing, and you said it right at the beginning of our interview, that maybe the Liberals weren't thrilled that this video went viral. 
I'm not so sure about that because I think if you press Trudeau, Catherine McKenna, Stephen Gilbo, Bill Morneau, uh, if you, I mean, he's out of there now, but look what he, he wants to go to some global, global governance. If you look at, I guess what I would call the brain trust of the Liberal Party, I put Christian Freeland in there. They all share this view that we've got to be chummier with China, that the UN is the center of the action. We have to obey the Paris global warming scheme, which, is, you know, Paris, obviously a foreign city in a foreign country. I think they're all actually sort of down for it. They're all for open borders immigration. They're all for submitting to what the UN says about global warming. I think it was sort of shocking to hear it said so concisely, but I actually don't think they're shy about it. I mean, they just don't usually say it so bluntly, but I can't think of a single senior liberal who would say, no, 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 we're not for that. I, th I think that's sort of what they are for. Yeah, I think one of the big problems is, you know, they're looking to all these institutions outside the country, but most of those institutions don't have much credibility. I mean, for example, I was actually glad to see Bob Ray uh, a few days ago say that uh, China should be investigated for uh, genocide by the United Nations. But then you look and say, okay, well, who's on the UN Human Rights Council? And it's China and it's a bunch of other dictatorships, you know, non-democratic countries. Basically, the UN Human Rights Council right now is the group of countries with the worst human rights record in the world. So if you're constantly looking to foreign institutions that have no credibility, then the question is, you know, what's the end game? What's the real point? And I think, you know, I, I wrote yesterday for the Post Millennial how it's, it's, you can't really have global governance and a democracy. It's really not compatible. A democracy depends on you being able to vote. And then, you know, even if you don't win the election, someone in your country wins. And then that person implements policy and that party implements policy based on what Canadians voted for and what Canadians want. So if you have global governance, then democracy kind of becomes a sham because, oh, you're voting and parties are switching and you've got a new leader, but the decisions aren't really being made at the local level or even the national level. It's being made somewhere far away by people you don't control and people you didn't vote for. And I think that's the really the deeper issue here is that you have a government claiming to be democratic, but then wants to kind of submit all our power to foreign institutions that Canadians don't get to vote for. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.